So this is Vola OS. I love this de-Googled experience on this phone. You can go buy this phone directly, and I've actually done a past review on Ubuntu Touch, which was just not quite ready for prime time. I was a bit harsh on it, uh, but the phone itself you can actually order from Vola, and it's de-Googled, meaning there's no Google programs by stock defaults here. Now this screen is not its default screen. When we hit our home button, you actually have a little Vola springboard. This is actually pretty cool. It's innovative. It does come with this little camera, this little manual here, and it shows you how to operate the springboard. It can be very cool. It's a whole different way of using your actual phone. It's really neat. And honestly, the instructions are quite good. Most instructions for all cell phones, you just throw them away immediately. However, the Volas, I was impressed with. If we hold it, you can kind of scroll through this section. Open your dialer, open your camera, show agenda. It's all meant to be used with one hand. And if we go to the left, you have your entire app drawer. Go to the left again. You have your settings to where you have dark mode, news channels, shortcuts. You kind of build out this springboard. However, I'm kind of old school and I'm set in my ways and I really just don't want to use springboard, but it's a neat option for those that want it. So for me, I just use quick step, which is a really minimal Android desktop. Very familiar with it. If you've ever used Android, uh, it comes with all the stock Android apps from any D Google device. Graphene OS is a lot like this. However, it does come with Aurora, Aurora store and F droid, which you can actually open up use for different applications. So you can install all kinds of different ones. I'm actually using SCR CPY, but it's a really neat uh, system. One thing about this, I will note, I do recommend using f a whole bunch to get everything because it doesn't have any trackers. The whole reason for this type of phone is like security and privacy. Uh, another good example of using this phone and actually what I'm going to use it for is my kids need a phone, but I don't want them in the Google ecosystem. I don't want them all entwined with a lot of the social media accounts either. And I can use this phone to do quite a lot of things. But when you do need to interact with Google services, what I've done is coming into the settings of f -Droid, I come into repositories. I actually added this right here. It's a micro G repository. You just add this in and this will emulate all the Google services. So let's say on the Aurora store, I download some app like YouTube, for instance, it's going to definitely need Google services and micro G will emulate those for me while sending a lot of false information to Google, which is a good thing. So I highly recommend adding the micro G repo and putting that in. You know, that way you don't lose much functionality from your existing device. But there's a lot of other cool stuff with this when it comes to tracking. Uh, I like to install this tracker control. This is from f -Droid, not the Aurora or Google Play Store, obviously. This actually shows what all is being tracked on your device. And you can even expand this out to, hey, this is what's going on, like Flipboard. Oh, my goodness. That's a, that's a really good app that tracks and sends your information to a whole bunch of different people. So that's why I like to install something like that, just to show people how egregious a lot of these apps are. And this is a very popular app that I don't personally use, but I wanted to install it just to kind of showcase uh, what all this app is doing. It's doing all these advertisements as well, which it just keeps going and going. Analytics, these are sending analytics to no less than 15, 16 people. Wow. I mean, it's, it's pretty wild. And then the essentials portion of this, you have to pretty much unblock it to use the app. Otherwise it just won't load anything from the internet, but fingerprinting, social, all these things, you just block them. If you block social, you can't use your social sign-ins. That's important to know this app, which if you're concerned with security and privacy tracker control, it's just a good way of knowing what you're giving up when you use a certain application, or maybe you can use that application like Flipboard, for instance, I could use, but I would be able to turn off fingerprinting. I'd be able to turn off a lot of that stuff, which is awesome. One thing I did install is BusyBox installer there. And if we swipe up and launch BusyBox, this right here 
it won't work because it does not actually come rooted by default because actually being rooted is considered a security vulnerability. So I was kind of interested on that and that's my easy way to check for root is just to install BusyBox and see if I can install it on anything because uh, BusyBox gives you cool Unix tools or Linux tools that I use quite a bit to interface with a whole bunch of different applications. Other notable things when it comes to this is it does come with twerp and how you switch between the operating systems with the Ubuntu Touch to Vola OS, which is what we're using here, which is the degoogled Android experience. It's quite interesting. I'm gonna pull up uh, the actual UB ports installer, which will blow your mind. So this is just saying missing dependencies for Samsung phones, but it actually read the Vola phone, logged me out, and you can actually easily switch between Ubuntu Touch Vola OS or Sailfish OS with a click of a button. It does take a while to upload most of these, probably about 30 minutes, I think, is what I actually tracked it out. But wow, super easy. So if you're a tinker and you switch between Ubuntu Touch and regular Android, it does work quite well. However, there are some gotchas, which I'm going to go ahead and show you those. And some of the gotchas when it comes to this is the settings. This is using Android 9. So very important to know if you want some features out of the latest Androids, this is a couple revs behind. If we go to settings here, one thing I noticed, and I'll go into system and updater. The updater here does not work. <laughs> At least it didn't work for me. I, I almost bricked my phone by using it. It fell into a boot loop and I had a heck of a time getting it to reload. I had to actually hold power and volume up, put it in fast boot mode, and then reload everything according to the UB ports installer. So this needs some work. The upgradability of this phone is a bit dicey and it's very rough around the edges when you get outside of the UB ports. I do not ever recommend actually running these updates directly from the phone. I would wait for UB ports to go ahead and say, okay, this is a stable release and launch an update to Vola OS. Other notable things here is I wanted to test the battery life. This was fully charged last night uh, around eight o'clock. It's almost been a full 24 hours now. And I will say this is pretty good battery life. Uh, as it is with general usage, it looks like it's about 50% 50, uh, 50 a day. So it'll last about 48 hours in the stock Android, which is considerably better than what I was getting in Ubuntu Touch. Ubuntu Touch, I was usually draining it in uh, about eight hours to 12 hour period of time. So the Ubuntu Touch is still rough around the edges just to, because it's such a young OS where Android has 15 years of development. So it's to be expected that you see some of these gaps. But the other apps that come installed, the camera was just a basic camera app. Nothing too crazy here. Uh, I didn't see anything with it, but I did really dig the default browser here. It's Fennec, I think is that, that's how you pronounce it. But wow, I'm, I'm telling you, I was very impressed with how this felt. Uh, very snappy browser, uh, it uses DuckDuckGo. Everything is on the lower bottom right, so it's all controlled with your hand. So you never have to use your second hand or it never felt weird. It was really a great experience. I actually like this better than the stock Android experience, how this is set up. But this probably would not be something I recommend uh, for many. However, I want to just kind of touch base on what my future is and what I'm thinking of doing when it comes to de-googling. Now, the Vola OS, I think, is great for those that don't want to tinker too much because it's very noob friendly and you can get the de-googled experience without much legwork at all. Uh, again, just launch UB ports installer and click go. Follow the, the on-screen instructions. It is very well laid out. The instructions on their website, however, are pretty bad and don't follow anything from the official Volo website. Go directly to UB ports to do anything with it, but it will come with this stuff installed by stock settings. So instead of going to some weird shady third party and buying something that someone's already used and manipulated, you now can just buy it stock, which is great. And seeing more players in this space is, is always a welcome change. However, I don't recommend this option. One, I, 
still a little salty about how long it took them to get me the device from Germany, but that's just because it's coming from Germany, I'm sure, and customs was a little bit tricky. What I really want and what I think the future of de-Googling is, is using a Google Pixel, <laughs> which is funny, but it has an unlocked bootloader or maybe even a OnePlus, pick your poison, and using Calyx OS. I really wanna do a video on that next and I'm gonna be doing that on my phone, but first I'm gonna be doing a video where there's certain things in my car I really like from the Google Android experience and I'm installing a weird deck, an actual Chinese deck in my car. Here's a couple pictures of it and I'm really looking forward to this project. I will do a YouTube video on it of ripping out my entire dash and replacing it with this deck that is a version of Android as well, but I'm gonna isolate it down and uh, see what all I can do with it to where I don't need to plug my phone in because right now Android Auto is so awesome and I'd hate to lose that feature going to a de-Googled experience, but I don't have to de-Google everywhere and uh, de-Googling in the car, I'm like, yeah, I wanna just kind of mess around with this and try this angle and see exactly what all I can do with that Android system. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Uh, what do you think of de-Googling? Is it just crazy? Should you just let big tech rule your life? Uh, you know, it, it's one of those things. Uh, Google's obviously in my life a ton, and it's something that I want to just kind of cut back on. I don't necessarily want to try and eliminate them completely as, well, I'm on YouTube, but <laughs> it's something that I think it's important for those that want to kind of experiment with this stuff to see all the options because I always want people to have those options. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.